The MZC valve is available in different configurations, ranging from cast iron to stainless steel, very often used in the pharmaceutical, the food, or in industries where cleanability is an issue or is necessary to clean the valve when changing colour or going over to a, a different product. Safe valve operation is of paramount importance for the system and for the operator. The valve is always supplied with an inductive sensor located in the holder on the side of the valve here. It is very important that the sensor is connected to the system and integrated so that when the T-bolt is removed, the power, if it has been left on, is cut off to the motor. The correct method of dismounting the valve is as follows. Firstly, ensure the valve drive has been isolated and the power has been switched off. And there's no product above or below the valve and the valve has been emptied of product. Remove the locking nut from the valve. The function of this locking nut is to make sure that the road has two fixed points when in operation. What it does, it overrides the Belleville washers that are mounted in this assembly here. The next stage is to take the central T-bolt out of its holder and place it in the rotor. The rotor has a, a hole drilled and tapped and we're now screwing this T-bolt into the rotor. Now we remove the bolts holding the end cover in place. Place the bolts on the holder and as you can see the washers are fixed to the bolt so you can't lose them. We need two of the bolts to work now as an extractor. These bolts are screwed into the end cover and used to prise the end cover from the bore. Using the two bolts, screw them in the end cover and you will extract the end cover from the bore of the valve, approximately five millimeters and place them together with the other four or the other 12 or 14 depending on the size of the valve to make sure we don't lose them. Now we're going to open the valve and leave the rotor inside the valve. To do that we place this plate before the T-bolt, central T-bolt and we screw it out and we use it now as an extractor and this pushes the rotor off the end cover. You can see the end cover coming away from the body. When it stops moving, that means it is separated from the rotor and now we can pull the end cover away from the valve. At this point in time, we can clean this face of the rotor, the end cover, the face of the end cover. We can take apart and clean the shaft sealing arrangement. And when that has all been done, we close the valve up again. And now we screw the T-bolt into the rotor, pulling it up against the end cover so that we can withdraw the end cover and the rotor at the same time. It is very important that the T-bolt is tightened firmly to make sure that the rotor is pulled up square against the end cover. Otherwise, the rotor will foul the bore, will cause scratches and damage the valve. If it's tightened properly, then there will be no problem when extracting the rotor without it touching the bore. Now I will extract the both together I now have the end cover and the rotor out of the valve. We can now clean the rotor further. We can clean this side of the rotor. We can clean 
the end cover, the bore, the drive dog, all the parts that need cleaning. We can also clean this shaft sealing arrangement. Because we've not moved the rotor, when we replace it into the valve, it should go directly into the drive dog without any problem at all. If the rotor has moved for any reason, then there's a good chance that the rotor will not enter directly into the drive dock. What you have to do then is make sure that the line that's marked on the rotor, you can see it here, there's always a mark on the rotor, lines up with a mark on the drive shaft. When those two lines line up, then the drive shaft is in line with the dock on the rotor. Now we close the valve. Replace the bolts. and then tighten all the bolt, bolts firmly, making sure that the mating faces between the body and the end cover are touching each other with no dirt in between. Now we can remove the central T-bolt, replace the locking nut, we screw the locking nut up in until it just touches the rotor it's been made very small for that purpose and then we just lock it in place don't forget to put the cover back on it's a moving part so we have to cover it European legislation and lastly but not the least important part put the T-bolt back into the holder to make the circuit complete so that the process operators can start up the process again. And I think if you operate the valve as I have demonstrated then you will have years of pleasure without any problems of the rotor touching the end covers or any um, unwanted happenings with your valve.